Welcome, my friends, to the latest edition of the Steve Bannon Was Right show. If you watched Bannon on the Timcast IRL podcast or saw me talk about it, you'll know that he said, when the parents find out what schools are doing to their kids, they will be rising up. On his return appearance, he said, I didn't realize it was going to be this bad. So uh, things are escalating a whole lot. And now we have Attorney General Merrick Garland saying authorities will target school board threats. NBC News reporting a national school board group asked the administration to help investigate and stop the increasing threats over policies, including mask mandates. Don't threaten people. Don't attack people. Violence is not going to help you in this one. It's cannon fodder for the establishment. But there are some very serious conundrums and challenges. And I understand the frustration and the anger that parents have. But violence ain't going to solve it. Now, there is a big challenge when you see these these protests where parents were trying to vote out the school board and the school board just says, nope, it doesn't count. So you end up with these crackpot weirdos who are indoctrinating your kids and you can't get rid of them to get your school back. Well, there is still an option. Take your kids out of these schools, period. I'm not going to mince words. This is dramatic escalation. You see, threats are wrong and the authorities should be investigating threats. But is this really a matter for the attorney general and the feds and the FBI, the DOJ? Something, something doesn't add up. My stars and garters, my friends, it seems like this one has struck a chord. The establishment is recoiling because parents are particularly unhappy with what's happening with their kids to the point where they're going full federal authority on this one. NBC News reports Attorney General Merrick Garland on Monday directed federal authorities to hold strategy sessions in the next 30 days with law enforcement to address the increasing threats targeting school board members, teachers, and other employees in the nation's public schools. In a memorandum, Garland said, there has been a disturbing spike in harassment, intimidation, and threats of violence against school administrators, board members, teachers, and staff who participate in the vital work of, of running our nation's public schools. To address the rising problem, Garland said the FBI would work with U.S. attorneys and federal, state, local, territorial, and tribal authorities in each district to develop strategies against the threats. Wow. Well, my friends, as I already stated, you shouldn't be threatening people or attacking people. These are, these are school board administrators. This is the, you, you don't want to be like Antifa. But I got to say, harassment? Okay, now hold on there a minute. Intimidation? What does that mean? You see the slippery slope? Now, it's one thing when I can say violence against administrators, board members, teachers, and staff. Well, of course, that's wrong, and you shouldn't threaten people. That's wrong, too. But what is harassment? Okay, well, you shouldn't harass people, but what is harassment? Is this an issue where parents are going to school board meetings and saying, we will vote you out, we will come for you, we will not let you do this, and they say, oh, that's a threat? Yeah. I don't see why the federal government is getting involved in this, other than the machine, the establishment, the cult requires your children to be fed to the machine. And this is why I take such issue with so many people who are like, I will sacrifice my values to feed my children. Because the end result is you sacrificing your children. Short term gains, long term losses. I hope you guys realize that you will not comply your way out of tyranny. There's a lot to be said for the tyranny. You know, I, I thought about this. Climate change, global warming, economic, ecological collapse. And I think there are too many people. And I thought, you know, it's something I asked Alex Jones on the show, you know, back in November. We've had him on since then. But I was like, what if they're right? What if what if we're just, you know, yeast eating the sugars and farting, you know, ourselves to death? That's what happens. I mean, the yeast consumes all that can be consumed and then toxifies their environment. And, you know, Jones said, I think about this. It's a difficult question. I mean, what if the elites are correct in that the planet is dying and everything they've tried, everything they've done to, to treat humans and people like good people just didn't work? Telling people, hey, do this. It doesn't work. You know what? That may be the case. But what isn't the case is that we should live the way they want us to. You know, I think about a future in which we actually solve the problems of climate change and all that stuff. There's dead zones in the ocean. There's, there's you know, colony collapse disorder. There's a lot of bad things happening. And then these, these, these elites come and they say, we want you to live the way we want you to live to make the world a better place. And I say, but I see you not wearing masks. 
I see you defying every order you made. So why are you coming after our children with the lies? They want to create a world where our children grow up with social credit scores. They, they own nothing and they're happy, as it were. It is a cultural revolution that will result in two distinct classes. The nobility of permanent wealth controlling the masses and the masses of pure ignorance just kept down. Of course, there will be smart peasants who will probably rise up and reject this, but, you know, they'll have absolute surveillance control of the state, making it very difficult for anyone to do anything, let alone eat. That's what's been happening. I can't tell you how many leftists say, Tim, there are no vaccine mandates because you could always choose to leave. And I'm like, OK, semantic argument, they're mandates. But yeah, and I argue that to an extent, the vaccine mandates are wrong because they're excising people from public accommodation and public use, 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 facilities, utilities. I also think people still have the choice to leave. That's true. But that doesn't make the vaccine mandates OK. And that doesn't mean there are no vaccine mandates. They're going to say, quote, while spirited debate about policy matters is protected under our Constitution, that protection does not extend to threats of violence or efforts to intimidate individuals based on their views. Well, I completely agree. Look forward to you investigating Antifa, Merrick Garland. <laughs> the action is in response to an urgent request last week from the National School Boards Association. The group, which represents school board members around the country, asked President Joe Biden for federal assistance to investigate and stop threats made over policies, including mask mandates, likening the vitriol to a form of domestic terrorism. Are you kidding me? We go through a year of fire bombs and rioting and smashed windows all across this country. And they say that is just peaceful protests. Yeah, I am not going to live the way these crackpot psychopaths want me to live. Sorry, it ain't going to happen. You, I, will, I will not go quietly into the night. The association asked for federal government for the federal government to investigate cases where threats of violence could be handled as violations of federal laws protecting civil rights. It also asked for the Justice Department, FBI, Homeland Security and Secret Service to help monitor threat levels and assess risks to students, educators, board members and school buildings. The group's letter documented more than 20 instances of threats, harassment, disruption and acts of intimidation in California, Florida, Georgia, New Jersey, Ohio and other states. It cited the September arrest of an Illinois man for aggravated battery and disorderly conduct for allegedly striking a school official at a meeting. In Michigan, a meeting was disrupted when a man performed a Nazi salute to protest masking. Of course, that was probably to say that, you know, the people enforcing it were Nazis. We are coming after you. A letter mailed to an Ohio school board member said, according to the group, you are forcing them to wear a mask for no reason in this world other than control. And for that, you will pay dearly. It called the member a filthy traitor. In making the announcement, Garland said the Justice Department would use its authority and resources to discourage the threats and prosecute them when appropriate. In the coming days, the department will announce a series of measures designed to address the rise in criminal conduct directed toward school personnel. It's about time you woke up and realized you are under occupation. You are under occupation. Antifa with impunity destroys you. A concerned parent say, I don't want this. And they say, shut your mouth or they will come for you. You are under the occupation of an authoritarian cult that believes insane crackpot nonsense. And they want you to, to follow the rules, undergo medical procedures, have your children be indoctrinated, or else. Congratulations on how far your compliance has already got you. I'm sure your children will have a very bright future thanks to the hard work you've put in. Oh, but Tim, you don't have any kids. Yeah, well, that's true. I can still tell you this. I ain't wrong when I say your kids will inherit dirt. In fact, worse than dirt. They'll inherit the gravel they will chew when they're working the gulags and being tortured. School board members are largely unpaid volunteers, they say. Parents and former educators who step forward to shape school policy choose a superintendent and review the budget. But they have been frightened at how their jobs have suddenly become a culture war battleground. Yes, because in this country, people have uh, shared history, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and these school board members tend to be people who reject those things for the cult, the cult that's occupying this country that doesn't believe in the Declaration, doesn't believe in the Constitution, doesn't believe in its own history. That's why I say occupation. When you have a nation and says, these are our heroes, and this is how our country was founded, and then a military force invades and says, no longer will you speak your own language, worship your own idols, or speak to your own heroes. We will tell you the founding of this country. I saw a story on Reddit. It was really interesting. It's like a short film about this man in China, 
And he wants to travel the world. So he takes a globe and he spins it. And then he puts his finger down on Ireland. And he decides he's going to go to Ireland. And so he looks up the official language of Ireland, which is Gaelic. And then he starts becoming fluent in Gaelic. And finally, when he's completely fluent, he says, now I can travel to this country. And then he travels to Ireland and he goes up to someone and starts speaking Gaelic. And they don't speak Gaelic. They speak English because they were under occupation for, I think, hundreds of years. I'm not an expert on Irish, you know, UK history or anything like that. And there's still anger and animosity with Northern Ireland. And you, you get my point. They were told to forget their own language. They were not allowed to speak. They were not allowed to, to believe what they believed. They were under complete occupation. In today's day and age of fourth and fifth generational warfare, you cannot simply go out and do what they did and flog people and demand they stop speaking. You have to censor people. You have to control the, the institutions of information. But you can't just take over. You can't just send out a crier of the occupying force and say, this is the truth, because the people will say, I don't believe you. You can, however, send occupy, uh, occupational you know, uh, propagandists into media organizations to have them report what you want reported. You can have the official government enforce what you want enforced. Oh, the U.S. is all too skilled at this with many other countries that they've done this to. And it's certainly happening here right now. So what happens when Antifa goes around and destroys your life and your livelihood? They will do nothing. When a man in Kenosha was bludgeoned over the back of the head by Antifa and left bleeding on the ground, where was Merrick Garland? Where was the mainstream media? It is only thanks to the intrepid independent journalists and the journalists of the Daily Caller and the Riot Squad that we were able to actually see what had happened. And when a young man, Kyle Rittenhouse, said, I'm going to defend my community, maybe misguided, and maybe irresponsible, he was defending himself. And now he's on criminal trial. Why? Well, how dare you attack agents of the occupation? When you are under occupation, you do as you're told. Truth be told, not every part of this country is under occupation. Florida, New Hampshire, Texas, West Virginia. You can still get by in, uh, in, in these places. And I tell you this, the last place these far left extremist cult members would want to protest would probably be West Virginia, because boy, they would not be too excited to see what happens when constitutional carry states say no, it would be bad. It would be really bad. And we don't want that to happen. They're going to say in a statement, Chip Slavin, NSBA interim executive director and CEO, praised the Justice Department's swift action and pointed to the detrimental impact the threats of violence and intimidation have had on the education system. Over the last few weeks, school board members and other education leaders have received death threats. OK, that's not cool. And have been subjected to threats of harassment, threats and harassment, both online and in person. The department's action is a strong message to individuals with violent intent who are focused on causing chaos, disrupting our public schools and driving wedges between school boards and their parents, students and communities they serve. OK, well, it's really simple. The parents should just dress up like Antifa and wave Antifa flags and say they're anti-fascist. And they believe that what these people are doing is authoritarian fascism. Then what's the media going to say? A bunch of people claiming to be Antifa showed up, but they're not really Antifa. Well, if they're wearing the masks and flying the flag, I mean, maybe that's the big problem. Maybe conservatives have been put off from just saying they are anti-fascist. I know the roots of Antifa, it's communism in, in, in Weimar, Germany. But perhaps they should just say, look, we oppose fascism too, which includes you. And then when you have a large group of black bloc and it's people who oppose violence and some Antifa guy tries to get violence, they stop him. Maybe the real thing you do is go to the school board meetings wearing masks and hoodies and waving the Antifa flag and say, we oppose fascism. Let them know you do, because I know you do. And then what? Antifa keeps disrupting our school board meetings. Incredible. Christopher Rufo tweeted this out. He says the letter follows the National School, school Board Association's request to classify protests as domestic terrorism. This is the office of the Eternal, Attorney General. In recent months, there's been a disturbing spike in harassment and intimidation. So this, you know, we know the department of department is steadfast in its commitment to protect all people in the U.S. from violence, threats of violence and other forms of intimidation and harassment, which we know is not true. We know it's not true because of what's been going on in this country for the past year or longer. Now, Antifa hasn't been as active as they were last year, but we still saw a shootout in Portland. Now, that man was arrested. So, OK, there is a line, apparently, but the right you show up with a Gadsden flag and the media will scream bloody murder. 
and the feds will come after you. You uh, burn down the pawn shop and execute a, secu- a, a, a retired police, uh, police captain. Nothing. Nothing. From The Guardian, California school board official pleads for protection from protesting parents. This is from a few days ago. That's right. The parents are snapping off. We got this story. Protester breaks glass door during Iridell Statesville school board meetings in North Carolina. Not a fan of this stuff. I don't like the, 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 the destruction. You have to be nonviolent, persuasive, resourceful. Certainly there are moments in history where violence was warranted. I mean, the U.S. had to go into Nazi Germany because a line had been crossed. Now, I certainly think that if we are witnessing people build concentration camps and round people up and we knew it was going on, maybe then, yeah, you'd want to actually stop that. The Civil War, for instance, violence was wrong. It was extremely dis- disturbing to see. And it, w- it was sad to hear that this, you know, this is part of our history and, and it happened. But the reality is there was something truly morally repugnant to stand up against. Today, however, there is that challenge of, while sometimes you have no choice but to physically stop someone from committing an atrocity, today you have such popular support that we are, we are no longer dealing with physical conflict. We're dealing with passive persuasive, persuasive uh, persuasion and resourcefulness. That's how you win. Convincing people to join you. From CNN, school board meeting canceled as crowd protests mask mandate. We have this story as well. Pitt County School Board continues mask requirement despite protest. This is why people are getting increasingly angry. They're getting angry because even after their protests and demands, school board doesn't care. They won't change their policies. They won't change their plans. They completely ignore the protesters. Well, and as they say, those who make peaceful revolution impossible make violent revolution inevitable. And that's a scary thought. We don't want that to be the case. Of course, you're not going to hear about what's happening across this country against Joe Biden from the mainstream media. Red State, however, says massive march chants F Joe Biden after NYC suspends thousands of unvaccinated school employees. Let's make it simple. A teacher that is uh, willing to be respectful and, and accurate with your child to teach them American history also is much less likely to be vaccinated because Republicans are more like there's an overlap, right? It's not a direct correlation. It's an overlap. The teachers who are, being, who are being suspended or fired are most likely the ones who would be independently minded. This really does remind me, uh, in, in, in essence, of Captain America Winter Soldier. The villains wanted to launch these massive helicarriers, flying uh, aircraft carriers, and load them up with an algorithm that could track deviants, people who are going against the grain, against the establishment, and instantly execute all of them. Now, I'm certainly not suggesting that's what's happening, but you can see they're purging anybody who is ideologically opposed to what it is they're doing. Those who are vaccine zealots are also likely to be critical race zealots because they just fall in line. So what can we do? Well, take your kids out of these schools. It's the first thing you can do, I guess. You know, and honestly, I don't have all the answers. I really don't. There are challenges. You know, we, 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 we try to understand what's happening. We try to figure out a, a good strategy. We want to be peaceful. We want people to be respectful. We want peace. We want, we want civility. But we're getting something different. And so perhaps the end result will really just be some kind of, man, peaceful divorce, national divorce, followed by major conflict. You know, for a while, I thought if there was some, you know, a state declaring secession, I was talking about this even last week, I don't think the feds could do anything. But now I think what will happen is if, say, New Hampshire declares, you know, we're seceding from the union. You would end up with the with all the Democrats saying this is an illegal secession. It's you can't do it. Demanding federal help. The media would call them, you know, insurrectionists and say conspiracy theorists, insurrectionists have taken over the legislature and passed. They, they would probably claim it was voter fraud and all that stuff. And then they would rally the rest of the country to federalize National Guard to go in and take the state over. Now, that's a, that's a bold uh, move to make. I don't know if they could exactly do it, but I certainly think the U.S. won't just let states say no. However, there is the alternative of soft secession, like California saying federal law no longer applies to immigration. Texas saying federal law no longer applies to the weapons we manufacture in this state. And New York saying we're going to actually require passports for people to come here and you need your IDs. So now you need an actual ID and medical card to be able to get any service in New York, meaning outsiders 
you're going to have a tough time of things. The country is breaking apart. And if it happens in one fell swoop, like in 1860, then maybe the, there will be a response. But it's not happening that way. It's just crumbling. It is decaying. The bonds are snapping and people are at each other's throats. Andrew Yang said on CNN that tensions in this country are at civil war levels. Wow. CNN saying it. I remember all those leftists were like, Tim's crazy for thinking there could be a civil war. Okay, well, don't take my word for it. Take CNN's word for it when they say that, when they have guests saying that. Anderson Cooper was talking about hyperpolarization and the escalation in this country. And Andrew Yang said, yeah, the anger in this country is at civil war levels. So maybe y'all need to be paying attention to that. And maybe you should realize that you will not comply your way out of this. What does that mean? It means move to the country, move to New Hampshire, move to Florida, move to Texas, move to West Virginia, get a homestead, start preparing to take care of yourself, get off the grid, all that stuff. I'll tell you this. If you've seen everything that I've talked about so far, the dramatic escalation nonstop, there was a shootout in Portland a couple weeks ago. A proud boy got shot. And you're like, this is where it stops. Things will get better. All right, you're free to think whatever you want. I'm not always right. But I'll tell you this, when the trajectory is escalation, I don't see how it just stops here. When you have, you know, the Merrick Garland saying we're going to investigate harassment, people on the right are going to say no. And it's going to it's going to cause a shock to the system that wakes up more people. It's like a Chinese finger trap. The more both sides are pulling, the tighter the trap is becoming. And if eventually they keep pulling, it's going to break. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at YouTube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.